Hello everyone, and welcome back to In the Greenhouse, our Q&A rambling series where you guys get to ask me questions, and I am very happy to answer them with whatever goose silly answers come into my head. And I have some bugs in this place, oh no! And look at this, oh my gosh you guys! All of these fabled lemon bushes are blooming. <laughs> Can you imagine how amazing it would be to walk into a nursery like this that is just overflowing with beautiful, beautiful roses, like fabled roses? What do you guys think that smells like, actually? I would absolutely love to know. That's, that's and actually very, very important to me to know from all of you. What do you think the fabled roses actually smell like? We are pixel biologists. Half of the fun of what we do is using our curiosity, our imaginations, our creativity to investigate the relationship between the pixel and natural worlds in ways that I don't really see a lot of other people do. So I would really love if you guys could tell me what would a fabled rose smell like to you? I kind of wonder if they would actually smell different to different people, or if they would smell like spun sugar, or, oh, if I close my eyes and think about something blue, what would I, like, what does blue smell like to me? Maybe the way that flowers, when you walk through a flower garden on a summer day and the sky is so piercingly blue overhead. <gasps> Little spider, come join me, friend. And the sky is so piercingly blue overhead. Maybe that is what these would smell like. Being in a, a mixed flower garden with roses as an undertone on a beautiful summer day where the sun is bright and there's so many scents just carried on the breeze around you. So there's my poetic start to this rambling day. Uh, probably poetic because I am dreaming about sunlight on a day that is not very sunny whatsoever. <laughs> Because we are still in Michigan, my friends. Uh, here, and we're actually going to prune this tree a little bit. I know it seems like it decreased its health, but by pruning this four petal maple, what we actually did was making it so the flowers can be seen. We're gonna do the same thing over on this bamboo plant. You wanna be careful because you don't wanna take off too many of the leaves and make the plant unhealthy, but it makes it sell for a lot more money. Yeah, I don't wanna take any more off, I think. It makes it sell for a lot more money when we go over to the nursery and sell flowers in the nursery we definitely want to do today because last time we upgraded the nursery for the first time, which was so exciting. All right, I am quite tickled. Let's see, we have tons and tons of four petal, or the four petal, or the fabled lemon bush. Oh, there we go. Do we have any four petaled maples? Yes, we do. Do we have any of these Knox fantails? Let's check. I don't see any. So let's go ahead and pure breed the Knox fantail. But I do see, just a second ago, I could have sworn I saw the bamboo. Is this the bamboo that we, we've got, that we just got? No, this is a different, ba oh, mystic bamboo. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and have these two actually give us some new seeds of themselves so that we'll be able to propagate those. And let's actually have the fabled lemon bush get crossed with the Knox fantail, I think, and just see what happens. And then I wanna cross the Knox fantail with a fabled lemon bush. And everybody else we're gonna sell, but doing fun, curious crossbreeding is definitely on high on my list of things that I want to do today. All right, and let's go ahead and sell all of these other failed lemon bushes. Ah, maybe give them a little bit of water. Okay, we should, ooh, dragonfly. Gotcha. <laughs> And let's actually raise the price on the fabled lemon bushes just a touch uh, because we have upgraded with the fountain. So, ah, all right. I hope you guys have a cup of tea and you would like to spend a little bit of time with me. Adorable little rhyme there. As we relax and hopefully take good care of our beautiful nursery by selling a ton of these fabled lemon bushes. So we'll have to see. But yes, so it is, believe it or not, even though we're heading into May, so 
overcast and dark outside today. Uh, I think we're gonna have a storm, but unfortunately it's still early enough that here it's been so cold. A couple days ago we had snow when I woke up <laughs> and I don't really see any leaves unfurling on the trees yet. So I really like, I oh, don't fuss about how expensive they are. I bought you a fountain, little one. <laughs> oh, see, you knew you wanted it. <laughs> Wonderful, I knew you'd take that little plant home. But all right, so back on track. Uh, yes, it's very dark outside. It is very overcast and the leaves have not yet started unfurling on the trees. So uh, it, it, there's not a lot of greenery and it just made me so happy to wake up and realize that I could share some greenery and some questions with all of you. And I have some questions from a couple of the last videos. I haven't collected all of them yet, so if I don't answer your question yet, please be persistent. Go ahead and leave it the question again. Uh, I kind of record these in a staggered way whenever I feel the urge to step into the garden. So if I haven't answered your question yet, there's a good chance that I am going to in the future. So that being said, Palm Girl asked, uh, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? And this is actually a great question, considering the fact that Chips and I are getting ready to most likely move to Taiwan for an entire year next year. That's something I've talked about a little bit on the vlog channel and something I hope to talk about more in the future for sure. But we would be doing that because he actually needs to study his Chinese. He is a Chinese historian. He is getting his PhD in Chinese history right now. It's a very specialized field, and as you can imagine, you need to be able to fluently speak, read, and translate Chinese, both ancient and modern variants and kind of like sub variants that you might see in different parts of the country over a vast number of centuries. Like imagine if somebody told you you need to be good enough at English that you could look at old style English from the 1100s and read it just as easily as you could a tweet and understand the context of both things. Like think about how hard it's going to be for historians of the future. They're going to need to know and understand slang and like the slang we use in tweets or memes. I mean, thankfully there's like meme dictionaries, but for memes, historians of the future will have to understand those in order to kind of understand the context of the lives we're living right now. And so Chips has to study all the way like back, all of the little tweaks, all of the little symbols, all of the, the way, the style of writing, the way it's presented, the things that a, a writer might say, but the hidden message they're actually sending, the context of when this was written, all the way back into quite far in Chinese history to now. So, Part of doing that is studying older documents. And where are those older documents? They're either in mainland China, they might be in Taiwan, uh, we might even travel to Germany because apparently in Germany they have um, a huge archive of very old Chinese gazetteers which would tell you a lot about what the land was like and what the people were like at certain points in history. So when you ask like where would I go in the world and why? The funny answer is anywhere he needs to, to continue his studies and his research. I know I'm supposed to say like, oh, back to Hawaii, or I'm supposed to say uh, like a really exotic travel destination. But as time is going on, I'm finding I love traveling not for the novelty of it, not to travel to a place and be like, oh, selfie in front of the Eiffel Tower. Like that can be fun for a lot of people and totally is a valid way to travel if that's what you want to do. But for me, I have so much fun traveling with chips when we go to learn something new. And that often is what we do when we're traveling for his work. We learn something new. I don't, like I did not travel to Taiwan a couple years ago for the summer and we lived there for almost three months so he could do a, a language course there and be immersed in the language to really help himself. Um, but I learned more about Taiwan from a very unique angle because I was with a historian who could explain the history of the, the city, the way it was laid out. These buildings represent this period of time. Uh, and when we went to the Taipei National Museum, I, we went there 
as often as we could because even though it was like an hour away in the big giant city of Taipei, we would go there because I learned so much and he learned so much by physically seeing things from centuries and centuries ago and having him connect all of it. Like none of the information I learned about the, the things, the physical pieces of jade or the paintings that I learned about in the Taipei Museum, uh, the National Museum, None of the things I learned about there had signs that explained it to me. They had signs in both English and Chinese, so if you do travel to Taipei and you are an English speaker and don't know much Chinese whatsoever, I know almost none of it other than like Ni Hao and Xie Xie, and I always say those things wrong because <laughs> I have a terrible accent, terrible way of pronouncing it, I need to practice. But they have signs there, so if you do travel there, don't panic. English is all over the place. Everybody pretty much speaks English if you need help. Um, but anyway, yeah, what I learned about my trip to Taipei was not what most people learn when they go, because they go as travelers and tourists. And I feel like when we went to London and we spent time in London, we really were there as travelers and tourists. And when we went to Iceland on our stopover back back home from London, we were there as, as travelers and tourists. And it is a completely different feeling that doesn't feel as, for me, it really lacked that sense of being connected to the whole world. It lacked that sense of, of like, oh, we're all sharing this planet together. Here's the history of this land. Here are the people who are living out the legacy of that history. Here's how the influences from the other side of the world are changing how this landscape is looking, and they're sending out their own changes. I love traveling in a way where we can kind of like live in a spot for a while. Not, not, I, I, I hate the way people say, so it's more authentic. Like, I just did air quotes around authentic. <laughs> Because I feel like that's kind of um, a weird thing to say. If you travel as a tourist, you're still getting an authentic perspective of a place because it's it's the place, it's the way that they're offering a tourist perspective and the way that you're taking it. It's authentic, you're alive, you're living it. It's not built out of artificial sugar. But when you travel to a place with the intention to dig deep to learn something, to really learn maybe a specific part of its history, to really dig deep, 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 deep and learn more about a specific aspect of its culture. I feel like that's when you hit the real flow of this is one planet that we all share. This history of humanity that has been built through generation after generation of people contributing their lives to this flow of history that is when I feel those things, when we travel and it's to really learn, not to sightsee, not to check things off a list like we did when we visited London, but to really dig deeply into the land, to dig deeply into learning something about the culture and to question, not just to like passively consume these things either, but the thing when I travel with Chips is he's learning about history, not so that he can turn around and regurgitate what he learned, not to just cough up facts like some sort of Chips-based Wikipedia. <laughs> he is traveling so that he can take the things that he has learned, the thoughts that he has, and combine them and create something new. And I think that's part of being human and contributing to the flow of humanity and being able to appreciate I think when you when you consciously focus and you are trying so hard to meet your life's work, to find somewhere where your skills, your desires, your passions, and the things that you learn all merge together to create a life work, I think that that is how you contribute to a, a better life, a better sense of, of who we could be, of what we could become, not only on a personal level, but on an entire level for the whole species. And because of, of who we are as humans, thus the entire contribution for the world. So I know I just escalated that question significantly, but it's been on my mind a lot of why do we like to travel? Because I would love to travel more. 
and it hit me that I could make all these lists about like going to touristy places, going to obscure places, searching for quote unquote authentic experiences. But the, the way that felt most authentic to my heart has always been when we travel and we discover things because we are striving to learn something deeply. So if I could go anywhere in the world, it is wherever I can find that feeling. Usually that is following Chips around the world as he digs deeply into like the history of China, the history of the world, and he starts building his own dissertation. He starts building books that he is going to write. And one of the big things I've been able to appreciate with being in love with a historian and watching him grow into a doctor of history is that there's always more to learn from history. There's always more to learn because you can always ask new types of questions and you can always look at it from different angles. And to be quite frank, we forget a lot. I think we honestly forget more than we've ever... Oh, we already had some of those fern plants. That's fine. I think we forget more than we ever really think we we can like discover or learn there's already a ton there to to like pull from uh but gosh like when i when i hang out with my beloved historian uh yeah i really do feel like we we honestly forget a lot more than we 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 think we can go back and learn about history so all right i need to stop myself because i can go on and on and on about this uh, it's just something i feel very passionate about lately because like i said Chips and I are thinking about uh, moving to Taipei for a year and then staying moved. Um, we are thinking about like making that big move. Okay, this is not gonna be a very successful plant. Uh, and then we're thinking about shifting from, okay, yeah, that's, the, you can tell by how much the seeds sell for if they're gonna be like fancy pants plants or not. But then shifting from living in Taipei to living in, is that kind of okay, three, to living in Japan uh, so that he could continue his studies there too. But I really got off track and rambled significantly for nearly 20 minutes. Um, but it, it's just, yeah, we're, I mean, we're thinking about giving up having a home. We're thinking about giving up uh, all of our stuff, selling. 70 to 80 percent of it to be quite honest we probably wouldn't sell any of it we'd donate it because it's just more trouble than it's worth to try to figure out how to save five bucks by selling an old bookshelf or something like that my birds uh if they're still with us because let's be frank they're very old and i only have three out of 11 left so uh it may be that time in the next year but if any of them are still with us my parents who i originally got them from would happily welcome them back into their lives my plants would find loving new homes in the local populace we would pack up my recording gear and we would go uh and then we might stay gone for a while and to to travel this world ethically to travel this world with intention to travel this world so that I could feel I got the most out of that precious time of that adventure and that it could allow me to become a better person. I've been asking myself these questions about where would I go and why? And the answer comes down to, I would go where I felt I could really learn something deeply and where I could really be a little humbled by the world, maybe seeing some of the great natural sights of the world so that I could remember that the, the beautiful sequoias, the beautiful redwoods, the beautiful wolves of Yellowstone, the, the beauty of the Great Barrier Reef, all of those things are related to the daily choices I make in like using single-use plastics. Those are all related to the choices that I make in, in what, how do I consume this world. When I, I want to be able to stand in front of the redwoods for the first time in that forest. And I wanna be able to ask myself the question, how am I consuming this world that you too need? Beautiful redwood forest. And I wanna be able to be proud of the answer that I can give back. And that is what I'm going to start traveling for and start searching out and sharing with all of you every step of the way. So that was probably our big question for the day. <laughs> Whoa, Siri! Like, I I love these because I never know where I'm going to go. My mind just takes off like a little galloping 
like full and I have no idea where it's going to head and I feel so fulfilled realizing that. I needed to know my why for traveling, Palm Girl, and I just discovered it through your question. Uh, I, I would apologize that it's not as simple as I'd visit Hawaii again. <laughs> but I don't think it should be because I don't want to travel for simple pleasures. I want to travel to become a more complex person and share this world with you guys on that journey. So enough of my my rambling on that note. Uh, we just got a ton of cash from selling all of those stunning plants. So let's go ahead and actually use that cash to buy something special from the nursery that, oh, not the nursery, there we go. Something special from the nursery supplies that I have had my eyes on for quite a while now. One of the extinct seeds! Speaking of appreciating and valuing, let's see, I have this guy. Is this an extinct seed? We should probably try growing it, just in case. Uh, but, and then let's go ahead and, do I have any of those guys? I do not. Let's buy one of these. A rare extinct seed from the extraordinary and exotic plants that were believed to be on Isola. We're buying that. I'm so curious about it. Um, and then we'll get a fern. I, I miss having ferns about, actually. And let's get one of these guys and crossbreed it because he looks curious too. All right. Ooh, there's our extinct seed. We're going to put him in a place of honor. Well, over here is a good place of honor. And let's put a fern in as well. And this is an Instagrow. I think we have enough to do like an Instagrow bomb, basically. Yeah, we do. All right, you guys ready? Pew! Grow, my pretties! Our extinct seed is a, a cactus! <laughs> okay, that's kind of exciting. Uh, grow again, my dears! Oh, 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 oh butterfly! Got it. <gasps> Wow, look at all of these. Okay, we need to give them a few more minutes to bud and bloom. Let's give our little plant, we will wrap up today after our new extinct unknown species blooms for the first time. Also, there you go, little guy. That, that leaf just didn't make it. And we'll give the rest of these guys a moment to kind of settle in. Let's also re, re, there we go. I wanna get our little fabled lemon bushes producing producing for us. Also this blue star lemon bush will get you producing for us. Viola lemon bush, why not? And we'll take care of the rest in a little bit. But all right, so I have rambled on significantly about that. Moving on! Tommy Ritchie asked, Shelter 3 is coming out. Did you know that you can travel around as an elephant? I did not. I had no idea that you could actually be an elephant in Shelter 3. It's not due to come out until next year, 2020. Uh, which, man, and just to reassure you guys, I'm still going to be Siri when we do all of this traveling. Uh, I want to be Siri the rest of my life. Like, Quite seriously, no pun intended. I want to be able to be here with all of you the rest of my life, telling stories and pushing myself to try to develop some sort of, of silly sideways way of trying. When I have to when I have to show up to you guys and be able to explain to, to all of you why I choose to do the things I do, it makes me live better. When I have to, to show up and tell you guys why I, uh, I, it's hard to explain because you're a role model when you do this. And I feel like because of that, I try to live as a better person and it has constantly pushed me to try to understand why I do the things I do and find a way to make better choices because I'm conscious of being a role model and I love being a storyteller. So for the rest of my life, I want to be doing these things uh, and I want to be sharing them with you probably here on YouTube. Hey YouTube, you have to stick around the rest of my life, okay? <laughs> or some sort of medium and platform that I can do those things in. So when I'm talking about going to Taiwan and going to Japan after that, probably like a year in Taiwan, maybe a year in Japan, um, maybe even traveling quite significantly that whole time, in my head and in my heart, the entire time I have a camera in my hand because that is one of the mediums through which I explore the world and understand it better. I know people often criticize like, oh, if you have a camera in your hand, you're not really in the moment. Well, I have memory issues for one thing. So no matter what, I would have a camera in my hand because it allows me to remember what's happening. And without my cameras, I, I really 
lose my memories. It's related to PTSD. It's related to some other like health things that happened to me when I was younger. Uh, and so I would have a camera in my hand anyway, not to be like dramatic about it. And to be able to share the beauty of the world, the joy of the world, to be able to honor the history of the world and how we can, we can be shaped by that history is very important. We get shared to us every single day hundreds of thousands of messages of like, buy this, go here, do these things, pay attention to me. And so to be able to contribute my own little bit of saying, have some joy, see this beautiful thing about the world, learn this thing that I don't want your money, I, I, I just want a bit of your time to, to share this beautiful part of the world. That's a great way to live, if you ask me. But again, I got distracted and this whole, I'm just definitely on a flurry of excitement today, if you guys can't tell. Uh, but the whole point is that when Shelter 3 comes out in 2020 sometime, I may very well be on my way, <laughs> moving and grooving on my way to Taipei. I may be getting ready to move um, my rump across the world for a year or more for an indefinite period of time but i will have you guys with me by my side the as long as we can find somewhere to make that happen as long as there is youtube or twitch or instagram those kinds of things i will have you guys with me for that journey because i think that it's a precious wonderful thing to share joy uh, so yeah, I didn't know you can be an elephant as in Shelter 3. Very excited. I have a lot of biology-based things to talk about elephants at some point in the future. Uh, apparently today as Siri just rambles about her hopes and dreams day, normally I would probably just be like, uh, that was silly girl, and like maybe scooch away. <laughs> uh, but I've been told by many of you guys that actually these kinds of conversations contain seeds that really help you make big choices in your life so i will leave it be all right let's wrap up and then hey miss rosie xo so good to see you again i'm so glad it was super peaceful for you to relax and uh you also mentioned that you really love the games i have been playing because it helps you to branch out and i just had a quick thought about that is that i'm so glad to hear that you've branched out from the normal kinds of games that you play to try different things and I think that that benefits everybody. I, I'm personally never going to be playing a pew pew shooty shoot game myself. Um, but I, I like I get that told that pretty often that I make games fun for people again, especially older audiences. And I think it just comes down to storytelling. I think you if you're an older audience member or a younger one, whoever you are, audience, bleh, that's a weird word. Uh, you guys know what I mean. Whoever you are, if you want to find a way to enjoy the games you play more, try new things, but give yourself permission to be silly and give yourself permission to tell stories. Because I think we often smother our, our trust in the fun that we get from telling stories as we get older. Because if we're going to tell stories, then why aren't we writing a book? Why aren't we becoming a big YouTuber? Why aren't we like going for the big? And I don't know if it's just my generation I, or if the who kind of ended up growing up into the hustle generation of adults or if it's also amongst like a significantly younger generation as well. But there's such pressure to only do something if you're going to be the best at it. And I think that that's one of the first ways that people cut themselves off from being silly, from having fun, from trying new things, and from just telling stories in the games that they play, and all of the fun that you might get if that is something you enjoy. So give yourself permission to tell stories, to be silly, and to have fun, guys. And I just hope that if you needed to hear it from somebody, hearing it from the silly goose might encourage you to go ahead and just make up whatever silliness brings joy into your life. Uh, and who knows, maybe it'll end up, maybe you'll, you'll end up being like another YouTuber too. You never know where that's going to go. And then finally, Teresa asked if there is a superpower that you could wish for, what would you wish for? Or like if I was growing up and I wished for a superpower, which one did I wish for? So yeah, actually growing up, if you wanted a superpower, which one did you wish for? 
I probably wanted to shapeshift into animals. I wanted to experience their world. I didn't want to become like a powerful tiger or like a, a big elephant or something just because the elephant is, is big and strong and the tiger is powerful and sleek. I didn't want to like impose my human perspective like, I didn't want to turn into an animal just so I could be like, ha ha, now I am human brain and animal body. I wanted to understand their world. And that should have been my first hint that biology was the best route for me. Because I wanted to become like a cardinal bird for a day and see how they lived. I wanted to know what it was like to be a cardinal. What was I afraid of? What caught my eye? How did I physically see the world differently than I do as a human? Uh, how, did I have a sense of smell? What did I go for for nesting material? <laughs> yeah, I really should have known from a much earlier age that I wanted to be a biologist because those were the kinds of questions that I was constantly thinking. It wasn't like, how can I, how can I be powerful and strong? It was literally just a desire to be able to understand those answers of like how these animals live in the world, which just cracks, cracks me the heck up. But all right, this guy is going to be done in a minute, uh, less than a minute, so we should see our mysterious new unknown species of extinct cactus bloom. And we definitely want to make sure that he's pollinated with himself before we go. Is this an Instagrow? I can't remember. That might be a mutation, and I don't want to use a mutation. Let's see. Grow larger. Okay. So this is the really cool... Um, Formula temporarily accel uh, accelerates plant growth. What's the one? Enormous health boost. There used to be one that like caused mutations. Where'd that one go? Generic, eliminates plants. Hmm. This one temporarily accelerates plant growth so much you can see it grow right before your eyes. Oh, this shifts the plant's DNA? Oh, didn't I just, uh, mutations? Are you sure? <gasps> Look at that, a mystic pear cactus. Well, there we are. All right, I apologize a little bit, my friends, for having been so all over the place today. I guess I just had a big thing to say about why I want to travel and how I'm beginning to think big questions about ethical travel and how to think about our future as a species and how it relates to our futures as ourselves and how I can do all of the things that I dream of in a way that is responsible and in a way that is, that is full of opportunity that I can bring you guys to. Just as Chips wants to contribute to the world through his research and the research that he will write and the students that he will teach, I want to contribute to the world my legacy and the flow of this human experience on this planet through the things that, the way I live and the way I share the way I live with you guys. <laughs> And I'll talk more about all these things on the vlog channel one day. They're just a big, giant, confusing mess of thoughts for me right now. But thank you guys for being here while I ramble them out. And I hope there were seeds of something here that, uh, that, that might be good for you too. That might go on and that might create our, our own kind of legacy. So, all right, guys, I'm being silly goose. I'm going to go ahead and get some rest. I hope all of you have a beautiful sunny day ahead of you, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.